Hey now, welcome to episode 95 of the Batman on Film podcast. BOF is a sponsor as well, and I'm going to start over because there's a lot of noise in the background. All right, we're going to do it. Okay, we'll do it again. Hey now, welcome to the... Do it again, hold on. (laughs) (laughs) You're thinking too much, man. Just be in the mood. All right. We would be honored if you would join us. I got a bad feeling about this. You were the chosen one! Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's a trap! I don't like Sam. It's coarse, rough, and irritating. I am your father. Hey now, welcome to episode 95 of the Batman on Film podcast. BOF is a sponsor as well as a proud member of the Batman Podcast Network. In addition to the BOF podcast, you can find other shows to support as well. Ryan, is that up to speed? Always, We always like to ask every week. It's up to speed. Yes. Everything's good? All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah, check out the shows. There, there are tons of shows, um, you know, and they're all pretty good if they if they made it onto the, you know, Batman Podcast Network page, I got to say. Love it. Yeah. All right. So, as you guys know, this is a Batman site, but we have these little satellite episodes for Star Wars. And I, <laughs> Rick Shu, the one and only, I am your host for the Star Wars shows. And I am joined today by my partners in crime, Justin Kowalski and Ryan Haas. Gentlemen, what's up? How Yo. you doing? Good. You guys really like excited. this? You guys like this announcery thing I'm doing? It's kind of. Uh, it's it's I, it's it's better than uh, saying that you're from Mesquite and yeah. uh, asking you what the weather is. Or or, maybe. or how about this? Oh. Or how about this? <laughs> hey now, welcome to the well, I, welcome to the bat was up. I was up coaching last night. I'm tired. We're just trolling. We're, we're just we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna troll. We're gonna troll Bill. He can't even, he can't he can't be here to defend himself. It's 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 not a good idea to troll Bill because you know Bill did see Star Wars in the theater. Yes, he did. He did. And he, he could did. He and, saw it. and he could edit. He all actually up on, on all of us. He actually worked on the set. In a he was a midi chlorian. <laughs> he was actually um, he was actually a midi chlorian. <laughs> That's amazing. That would be created. That's that. That's on his IMDb's midi chlorian number thirty-eight. Yeah. I love it. There he is. All right, that's and good. and as always, Batman <laughs> on film is the authoritative, the definitive, and straight from Los Angeles, California. Give us the. Come on, Justin, do it. Oh, I, I was like, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, you're, <laughs> you're from, from yeah, you're from Riverside. Yeah, you're from Riverside. Yeah, but, get, but you give a get, get, now, give us, tomorrow. give us the dadgum if original. If no one's listened to this before, I <laughs> have no idea what's happening right now. I always vomit. The dadgum original. And as always, Batman on Film Authority, Definitive, and the dadgum original. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm coming to you live from Southern California. <laughs> Batman on Film. All right. So uh, <laughs> let's 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 introduce some like people and wow. and, and try, I like, I try. Like when we're on at nighttime. It's so much better. Yeah, we're we're all we're drinking and it's it's we late left after dark. It's <laughs> it's late. Oh my goodness! Good gracious! Send us all your romantic queries to. All right, I'm gonna introduce my. Hey, all right, I'm gonna introduce my. I'm gonna introduce my buddy and our returning guest. Brian Chatlin, film enthusiast, professional actor, professional voiceover guy, professional photographer. Brian Chatlin, what up? And I have now achieved the status of buddy. Yay! <laughs> professional buddy. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> and then, Ryan, why don't you introduce this uh, this hack that's on the show with us tonight? What's his name? I wouldn't call him a hack. I want to uh, call him... I think he's... I a slack. He's, no, 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 no. No, you troll. I think he's... Uh, I think he's definitely buddy status. He yes. he adds a, a sprinkle of of good good seasoning to any podcast, particularly a Star Wars podcast. He he, he was great oh. on the last one, and I'm super glad that he's back on this one. Mister Paul Herman P Thug Herman Twenty Two, correct? Hey. Welcome back. Yeah, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It, last episode I was on was amazing. I had a great time with all you guys. So yeah. thanks for having me back. This is awesome. And mm-hmm. it's an honor to be uh, back with you guys. Hey, likewise, man. You, you're fantastic. Awesome. Brian, fantastic. It's going to be a great show. So guys, let's talk a little. So actually, you know what, Justin, you had a friend to introduce. We have somebody else on the show today. Who, who, who do you want to introduce today? Yeah, I would like to introduce my good friend, the Stone Farking Wheaton Woot Stout that I'm enjoying here. It's Star Wars <laughs> themed, and it is from Stone Brewing, and it is quite delicious. It is has, it your buddy? Is it buddy it, status? It is. He is buddy status, and it's quite delicious. And I recommend anyone who's enjoying Star Wars and likes a tasty beer to try this. This tasty. It's it's a limited edition every year. They put out a different one. I'm actually drinking the 2016, not the 2017. It has beautiful art from Amanda Connor on it, and it's brewed with pecans, wheat, and rye, and it was quarter What's, aged and some bourbon barrels. So, what's the difference between a pecan and a and a pecan? California. Texas. There you go. All right. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that sounds delicious. I, I'm actually drinking a. Commun- I'm drinking a Pell. Uh, just uh, it's kind of it's kind of a generic lager, but it's it's community beer and it's a very very good local brewery in Dallas. Anybody else drinking beer? Go. Having a cocktail? Anybody? No? I am actually no. drinking a. Uh, I'm going to go a little fancy on you here. I'm drinking a self infused uh, cucumber vodka with a little bit of uh, ginger ale. Hey. A little bit of ginger. Don't fancy. Yeah, very nice. Okay, so here we are to talk Star Wars. And so yesterday, they, Lucasfilm is they, dropped uh, the new poster, which I want to discuss that as well. And they just dropped the, the new trailer. I'm thinking this is probably the last last Jedi trailer we are going to get. It's really only officially the second one. And my mm-hmm. guess is we'll get some abridged 30-second, 20-second versions of this particular commercial. But I don't think we're going to see that much more footage. Does everybody agree with that? They're going to can- this No, is I, I 100% no. disagree. Yeah, like, really? We're going to get – yeah, because oh, in, the no, Force yeah. Awak- when the Force Awakens, what they did was they, they put the two teasers out. And then they waited forever, like this one, to put out a trailer, which I think is ridiculous, by the way. Because Rogue One <laughs> didn't even wait this long. They put it out. In, <laughs> they put it out in August. It's just so. It's so ridiculous. Anyway, yeah. um, what's what they did with the Force Awakens was they put out this trailer, and you think, oh, it's no more trailers. No, no, no. You got like eight different international trailers, and That's like right. 50 t- and then like fifty TV spots. So no, this actually yeah. is just the beginning of like the entire movie being or half the movie being broadcast. Cast it on yeah. uh, national television in, in 50 seconds. Uh, <laughs> well, he, 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 here's the thing. Super you have already seen all the key points of the movie and pieced it together. Man, it's frustrating. It Got is. It. it is. Yeah. I don't think that's the case with this film. I don't think anything about this trailer is what it appears on the surface, but we'll talk more about that. Oh, I agree. Really- yes, I, I agree with that too, but I'm talking about like visually. That's why I'm pretty much anti trailer now. Like for, for, for Marvel <laughs> films, DC films, like, the, like you guys, you know, are, are bantering back and forth about this Justice League trailer. I've has, still haven't seen it. I hope I don't see it. Like, I hope you I don't. Have you saw the last one. Well, what, whatever. I, I don't want to get into But my, my point is this. So, like, like all, the, all the Thor, all the Thor Ragnarok, you know, trailers, like, all the stuff. Like, Rogue One, after that one main trailer in August, I stayed away from everything else afterwards. Yeah. I just don't, uh, I don't need, yeah. I don't need this. Yeah, know? it's a good Mostly practice to, 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 it's a good practice. What I've started to do is I watch the official, like, main trailers but everything else, like international stuff, TV spots, it's really easy for me to just start ignoring it at that point. So I'll watch yeah. the one to two to maybe three official big trailers, but everything else just avoid. Yeah, I have uh, a buddy. Spider-Man at Homecoming was a great example. I wish I hadn't gone to see oh. the trailers because yeah, by the time was, you got in there, yeah, they the spoiled movie. too much great in movie. Yeah. But way too much in the trailers. Perhaps, yep. but let's talk about this trailer. I like, yeah. I like hey. that segue. Look at that segue. All right, so I'm going to actually start hey. with I'm gonna start with Paul. Paul, let's talk about The Last okay. Jedi trailer, sir. The brand new one that just came out yesterday during Monday sure. Night Football. What were your initial thoughts? What do you think of it? Just let her rip. Well, the, the Monday Night Football matchup was awful, um, first of all. Uh, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Um, and it was just funny. Like, you have, like, oh, we're talking about the trailer, not the lead up to the trailer. Okay, my bad. Um, uh, which I, I'm a big NFL guy, so it was just a bummer. It was a bad. Actually, maybe it was a good thing. It was a bad matchup, right? Because then you know it was we couldn't be distracted afterwards. Um, anyway, um, the trailer. So you know, I, I'm 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 pretty much spoiler free from this movie, and uh, I have no idea like how our things are going to be working in the film. And um, 
that was not the case for The Force Awakens. I spoiled myself rotten. I could not mm. get enough out of that movie. And it's because I'm a you know diehard Star Wars fan, and I couldn't wait. I was, you know, Revenge of the Sith was the last movie I had seen in the theaters of mm. Star Wars. And you know, I saw the movie, movie like eight times in the theater. So, um, you know, I, I just could not help myself. And with this one, I said, I, I, you know, with Rogue One, I kind of tested it out a little bit where I'd stayed away from spoilers and, you know, set – you know, scoops and things like that and, and stolen pictures or, you know, whatever. And I, I thoroughly loved Rogue One and I, I avoided as much as I could. And I really think I, it made, made the movie experience so much better for me. Um, when I was, so with the last Jedi, I, it's no different. I'm just going, this is, this will be my last trailer. I'm going to avoid as much as I can within, within reason. And, um, so I kind of went into this going, okay, let's, you know, let's see what this movie has now. And now I think we, I don't know how you all felt about the last teaser that was put out at celebration. Um, th- that was a little underwhelming to be quite honest. Um, and I just, you know, I knew they're going to have to bring out the big guns to really like, you know, get our juices flowing for this trailer. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I brought, I brought my wife down. Um, and, uh, you know, I said, you know, made her, she was eating Thai food upstairs and I said, come down, hang out with me. And she was bummed out. And then, uh, you know, she watched, she begrudgingly watched the trailer with me with, that was great. And then ran off right away. Um, you know, so no, um, I watched the trailer and I was, I was blown away, uh, how great it was. It was a really, really good Star Wars trailer. Um, you know, I, I think it, it Every time you see a new Star Wars trailer, you're always like, oh, this is so great, you know, because it's Star Wars, right? And it's hard for me to separate this from the other ones. But I can say this right now that this one had just a lot of surprises in it that you weren't expecting to see. Um, I wasn't expecting to see um, – a lot of the story points they brought in the movie. Whereas mm-hmm. I felt the force awakens, they kind of tried to hide that aspect of it. They try to keep the mystery. As, as All mysterious of it. That's possible. that most J.J. Abrams mystery box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. And so yeah. because of that, and even though I knew the story at that point already, and like every other hardcore Star Wars fan pretty much knew, knew um, this one, I, a lot of us don't know. We don't know the whole, you know, a lot of the story points and some of us do, but anyway, my point is, I, I had no idea, but it was great to get some story context out of this movie and some stuff that I wasn't expecting. Like, oh man, that's a legitimate surprise. Like when Ray and Snoke and, and it was revealed, like they they actually have screen time together in that one scene, which we'll talk about, I'm sure, in this uh, episode. So it was wrapping up my initial thoughts. Um, I think this this thing was amazing. Uh, it was breathtaking. It visually looks stunning. The crate looks incredible. Uh, that's the planet, the red planet with all yeah. that stuff on it. I um, love red. It's amazing. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's great. So, yeah, red's great. And so and there's lots of red. And uh, I I we'll dig in more uh, d- uh, deeper into this. I can't wait to because that's how I am. But yeah, you guys, I I loved it. Awesome, Ryan. What did you think? I, I really loved the trailer. I, I, although I enjoyed the, the previous one, I do agree with Paul that I felt like it didn't really do enough to get me like, it was almost like, oh, I hope you know people are going to watch this movie anyway, so we don't have to like really impress people too much with this first trailer. It didn't, it was mysterious in the story and everything, but it didn't like show enough wow, like shake and shake up type things to really get me super super invested in it just because I already was but this but this trailer did all the stuff that I wanted the last one to do it shows a lot of the main characters it, it gives you a lot of and I don't feel like anything it showed was too spoilery just because we don't know what the movie is like I don't think you can point at any scene in there and, and say oh yeah that's exactly what's going to happen in, in this this in this order but there's enough things that you can either infer or speculate on or, you know, just possible story points and threads that you think might be going on. There's a lot to chew on, a lot of food for thought. Um, and I'd also, you know, and it, as much of the main characters it showed, um, it was interesting that, that they didn't really show any of the new characters, like the new, new characters that are in the film, which I thought was interesting, like Laura Dern's character or something like that, for example. Um, but I wanted to see more Luke, and I'm glad we saw what we saw, and... You know, a lot of the thing, every, every, I'm all, all hanging on a thread. Every word he says is just kind of, what does it mean? And what's he talking about? And who's he talking to? And, um, so just in general, you know, and visually, like, 
like Paul said, there were a lot of really cool shots. There were a lot of great character things, but there were a lot of nice epic like space battles, like with Kylo Ren or, you know, some that lightsaber stun stick type fight we see between Finn and Phasma, I think is going to be really a really cool part of the film too. So there's, I just overall really enjoyed the trailer. It did make me more excited for it overall. That, that's great. And you know, I'll, we'll dive into the specifics as we move along here. But one of the things I just wanted to point out real fast, because you're talking about Luke and seeing Luke. One of the things I was actually nervous about guys, it was Mark Hamill himself, as much as I love him and as fantastic mm-hmm. as he is. I'm like, can he act? Because quite honestly, Oh hell yeah. He can act. He, he has a, he, <laughs> I mean, yes, in the studio and he's an amazing joker, but can he just, can he bring it down and, if you look at his body of work post Return of the Jedi, he, he's not really done it. It's anything. limited. It's limited, <laughs> and the stuff that he's done, he's very he, he's overacting, and yeah, that the, well, he he does Joker even when he's on screen, right? Absolutely, and when he's doing the Joker in the studio, it's it's fabulous, but it is a cartoon Joker, right? right? right. So, um, but man, let me tell you something when when he is talking in this film, and when he looks, he's at, Luke Skywalker. He's Luke Skywalker, and he looks like he just looks yeah. like a seasoned actor that hasn't missed a beat. When he looks at her and says, yeah. "You know, I haven't, I, I didn't fear it enough that I'm scared now," or whatever the line is, and I think he's probably referring to Kylo there, but. Whatever. Yeah, he's he's uh, yeah. Luke Skywalker who's been through some shit. Excuse Bit, me. <laughs> man, he, he's been through some shit. Say it. This is a rated R show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's he, <laughs> he really, he eased my nerves a lot. Okay. Brian, yeah. what, what did you think about the trailer? And, and do you agree with me about Mark Hamill? Uh, yeah, I agree with you about Mark Hamill, man. Um, I, I was a little nervous about that when they just showed him at the tail end of the last one. I'm thinking, okay, first off, he's let himself go. Uh, he's looking like the appearances I've seen him do on other TV shows. And all, the only thing I've heard of wait, his wait, 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 let himself go. Dude, have you seen this guy in the last 25 years? I thought he looked fantastic. I mean, you, you, well, yeah, I thought he looked great. Mark, 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 Mark Hamill 2002 is letting himself go, you know. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, okay. n- neither here or there. That's, but, but That's go ahead. True. Right. Well, but when you're, when you're look when you're thinking of the hero of the, the New Republic, Old Republic, uh, uh, the rebellion, everything else, when you're looking at the hero, um, the man who was standing there was somebody who's been beaten and broken and they didn't, you didn't hear his voice and I was a little glad of that and I was nervous about it. And then you, you hear his voice in the trailer and you see his face as he's actually scared and go, Oh, okay. Mark's back. All right. Bring it on, brother. Yeah. Um, yep, yep, yep. No, he's he's back, man. I I don't know where he's been. I don't know what he's doing, but uh, uh, I can't wait to see. This is a this is a Luke Skywalker that's been through some shit, and he's scared. So uh, yeah, digging that. Um, what what, what, what what's, what's he scared of, dude? What is it? Uh, he's scared of being creating the problem. Right. I think it's so not too. just the problem. He's scared of having having caused it. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And if she becomes a Jedi and then she falls to the dark side, becomes a Sith, and then it's just yeah. this vicious cycle. Oh, it's just so awesome. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. The look in his eye after she breaks the, 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 the rock, just meditating. Dude. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Bring it on. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, I'll, that I'm absolutely loving is you've got the, uh, uh, the, the ship, uh, color motifs are mostly gray. But the two planets, you've got the planet where she's with Luke that is mostly blue, and you've got the planet where the battle seems to be happening where there's a motif of red. Love it. Bring it on, man. Me too. I, I love mean, that's, it. That's deliberate art direction. That's not an accident. That's fantastic. No, it is fantastic. Now, listen, we're going we're gonna to take, take this to Justin, who loved the Justice League trailer that was all red. So <laughs> I, I, can, I can only assume that since with your fetish for red that you love the Last Jedi trailer, right? You just love it. So... <clears throat> Go, go, oh, pod- yeah. go, go, yeah. go, go podcast. <laughs> let's go. All right. Let's so, go. Let's go podcast. To, to get, <laughs> hey, let's go podcast. Uh, to get, to get all the, you know, the fun out of the way. Last night I had such a good time, like trolling everybody. This trailer was good. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. It was really good to build up this, like, you hate it. I don't hate it. I, now I will say out of all the trailers that came out this weekend, I enjoyed the Justice League one more just because that's my jam more than Star Wars, but I love Star Wars. Uh, it, that, that makes any sense. I went and bought a special Star Wars beer just for the podcast today. Did so you enjoy it more than the previous you. trailer? Um, no, actually, I think I liked the other one better, but I wasn't really. Like, kind of Paul, I wasn't. I wasn't so hot on it, but I just remember like you were really I, down I, on that first trailer. Yeah, yeah, but I think because, um, I, dude, I I did a lot of homework last night. I was just watching them over and over and over and trying to, you know, figure out what the heck's going on, and I kept remembering like. You know, FJ kind of just went on this long rant about like what's going on, and just like so I was trying to like purge that, and but 
you know, overall, you know, there's for me, it's a certain visual things that pop out in. This is going to sound super silly. Like Luke's cyborg hand is so heavy metal. I love it. It just like I loved seeing it, and I was geeking out over like there's like more to it. Than, yes, I, I, I there's I, like all these little cogs yeah, and stuff moving, and I was so yeah. into that. We, we, like, we, yeah. we, you get, we get, awesome. we could totally pair Luke up with that heavy metal hand with Jason Momoa's <laughs> James Hetfield Aquaman. What a freaking what a what a, what a oh, crossover what a be, what a crossover that would be. No. That is going to be the album cover of my life. So there's that, um, I like you know see, seeing. You know, I was going to make a joke about the red, like Kylo on the red background, picking up his lightsaber and stuff like that. But um, th- th- there was a that seems there, that, a, seems, that s- seems kind of weird to me. I, I can't lie. That looks like th- th- what he's I don't know. There's something about just that shot. What's all red. It doesn't yeah, look, but it, yeah. art direction. Like, you know, like Brian was saying, there's there, there's some intentional choices. You know, Absolutely. In and I'm sure in context, it'll be great. I'm just saying it just it's the only scene yeah. that kind of just kind of makes me go. Oh, that's weird. But anyway, yeah. go ahead. Um, I love ad ads. There's like one of my favorite freaking like Star Wars, like machinery vehicles. And they, these ones have these like nub nose. So those are cool seeing those. Um, there was a, the one thing I thought was awkward. There was a lot of this like staring at each other stuff. And, and I, I always feel like without context, it's just weird. Like Luke, like Leia, she's staring at freaking Kylo. And then like Luke is staring at Ray. They're, and they're not staring like, though. They're, they're sensing. They're sensing. Well, God bless yeah, you, they're not God, Paul. There you, you go, Paul Harmon I, for you, everybody. Paul Harmon. I'm, I don't mean no. to be. I don't mean to be rude. I apologize. I had. I had. His, I, I couldn't. No, that's fine. I couldn't I'm sensing. Pa- hey, you're annoying and, and and I, I, I'm gonna <laughs> listen. I'm not annoyed. No, 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 no. no, no I'm, I'm, I'm joking. I love you. You know this. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I, I could. So, e- I could effing hug you right now, Paul. That was. That was great. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, well, a lot of this stuff felt like you know some of the retreads of the end of the Force Awakens. Um, as Paul called, I was actually laughing last time. Paul kept calling it TFA, and I was like, "Why is he talking about Tina Fey?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What Tina Fey? TLJ TFA, baby? Like as Red? Right. There you go. Hey, she should be in Star Wars. She could be Leia. Hell um, no. She has an affinity for in that suit. It, it gets her out of like jury duty. Okay, uh, deep cuts. So, <laughs> oh anyways, God. that is. I, I actually know that cut. I can't believe. Yeah, it. Wow. So, I can't a lot believe of it just kind of felt like extra footage from the end of T, like The Force Awakens. And, you know, they're. Yeah, it's but- Ray and Luke hanging out. Um, not saying it was bad. It just there was nothing in this trailer though that did give me electricity, and I was like, man, I don't, I'm not. I, I thought I'd be like more pumped, and I'm not. But I'm here's the thing, I'm gonna go see Star Wars like the day it comes out. You know, that's that's gonna happen. Um, but I just didn't push me over the edge. A lot of pretty shots. I love a lot of the setup shots they have. Like Ryan Johnson, like is just like I, I not a. F- Big fan of Looper, but I like how it looked. You know, mm-hmm. I, am, yeah. I am 100% agree with you. Yeah, I, I you think know. he's good at painting a picture world and and world building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so I'm I'm, I'm into that. Uh, I, and I don't mean to be. I'm not trying to be critical. I really not because I know like last night it probably built. I'm probably bumming people out who were like, I thought you were gonna rip it. I'm not. I'm not ripping it because it's oh. Star Wars. I love Star Wars. But um, some of the things that were distracting to me, I thought Leia looked really weird and. I didn't want to be disrespectful well, because there's a question, Force Awakens. Question, but how much of that is actually her, and how much of that is digitally done? Now that we know that they're good at it, uh, no, that's her, man. No, that's, that's her. I, 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 and I don't. Yeah, it's, it's not only one hundred percent her. I don't even know what you're talking about. She looked weird. I think that scene is. She looked great. I thought that, that's the most. That, that's my favorite moment in the trailer. Is that man? I just. Yeah, stare, well, just something about her nose is bugging me. And then I know well, she, well, she's had a lot of work done, a, dude. Yeah. I, yeah. Anyways. Uh, and then the scar, man. I just kept thinking about the scar on Kylo. I'm like, why? Why oh. is it it's like it's move, but move? it's also got like some some upgrades yeah. to try to heal it or something or fill it in. Yeah, Which I, so, I think it's well because remember this movie takes place right after, literally right after the Force Awakens. So yeah, like you yeah, know he's trying to. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think that like, <laughs> it would make sense that he's trying to heal himself if he can. I mean, you mm-hmm. know. So which I to be honest. I, I'm so sorry. I'm jumping in. I don't mean to do this. You're totally um, allowed to. You're totally allowed. Uh, uh, all right. Thank you, Justin. Um, Look, with that shit show, <laughs> that shit show introduction we had. Do you think there's any rhyme or reason to this episode? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Just, well, just, just go. First time listeners are like, uh, what, what is this show? What is this? I'm, the, I'm just trying to be polite. I'm a polite guy. I can't help it. Um, no, I just think that it, ma- it makes practical sense. The fact that they, he would want to heal himself. And also yeah, yeah. from, from a outside of like movie making experience, who the hell made the decision to make 
Kylo's scar so effing bad in The Force Awakens. It looks so stupid. Yeah, I remember. What, what, <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. That's why it makes me nervous about Episode Nine. Make it stupid. <laughs> stupid move it back. It's like you know. It's funny. Ryan Johnson like is probably sitting there watching with JJ and JJ. Like, JJ's like, oh look, like look, look at this scar I just gave him, man. Just like Anakin. Now, and like, Johnson. And then, he, and he looks at you know, and then Ryan looks at JJ and goes, "Did you ever watch a prequel? Did you ever watch Revenge of the Sith?" And he's like, "No." Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I mean. So that's the thing. So I, I feel like Ryan Johnson goes, "Okay, first thing we'll, we're doing is moving a scar a little bit over to the left." Thank you very much. And you know, and so I feel like that was one of the first things he thought of. Like first thing, he, you know, he penciled in, "Move Kylo's scar because it looks effing awful." Next, Check. all right. He looks. Um, he, you know he, 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 he looks like. I, I mean, I, I say this and I mean it. I, he looks like Anakin to me. In this. Well, yeah, yeah what I was going to say is, you know what I like about it is the way that they've like filled it in. It almost looks like a technological type of thing, which right. is kind of cool because, you know, once Cop, all placement. these people start moving towards the dark side or whatever, they get, you They're know, selling these Star artif- Wars band-aids. they get these artificial <laughs> limbs and stuff, you know, with the hands and everything. So it's, it's kind of representative of his, you know, s- slight descent. He's getting these mechanical like upgrades. Or Ab- something. Absolutely. And by the way, quick, 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 cool. so let me jump back quick, quick side, but, but quick side note, do you know what they call band-aids yes. in Europe or the UK? I should say uh, Royal cheese blasters. Royal cheese. <laughs> They cut. They cut. <laughs> they cut. They call them blasters. Anyway, continue. Yeah, but he. But, but, but Revenge of the Sith, Anakin and Kylo, uh, the Force Awakens. There's some uh, intentional uh, visual foreshadowing there. I think. Uh, well, uh, force yeah. shadowing. Oh. Oh. oh, oh, oh. So, so, I mean, his hair is the same. It's just dark, but it's the same yeah. same hair yeah. style. Oh, yeah. Bitch, I bet she's got sand. Okay, so <laughs> the part that I loved, I loved Finn and Phasma. Yeah. Bad. You know that yes. was cool. And um, my kid loved that because my kid's favorite character is, is Finn. So he was glad to see that he wasn't dead because yes. you know, he, he, had, he had he had some concerns. Aww. So Finn's alive and he's battling yeah. Phasma. And I really hope Phasma has some some big moments in this. But Apart. other than that, like you know, yeah. the Porgs kind of whatever. The Porg, I feel like man, people I thought hate it was Ewoks. great. I don't like Porgs. So I'm like, man, give me a reason to love a Porg and maybe I'll change my mind. Right now, I'm like, that's a Furby. And I don't like it. And don't try <laughs> well, to emotionally let's, let's, manipulate though. me with that. Let, 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 let's see. Here's here's the part that the that bugs me about that scene, and this is because I'm a purist, right? Mm-hmm. Is that that, that the gentleman? And I don't even know his name. I should. Sorry, but I can't Chibaka. remember it. Here's Chewbacca. The, the, the guy that plays Chewbacca now. It's just it's Peter just Mayhew. it's just not Peter Mayhew, <laughs> and you know, oh, and, and you know that. Now listen. He also knew. he also played him in the Force Awakens, but he was juxtaposed right. all the close up shots and everything were Peter Mayhew, right? He he's right. he's just retired. He can't get around. Yeah. So he's not even yeah. doing. And it's just something about it. It's just sad, you know. It's yeah. you know, and, and we'll get used to him because he's going to be in the Han Solo prequel, and you know they have to move yeah. on with him, and he's doing a great job. But I can just tell. It's just you can I can look at him and say that's just not that's not Peter Mayhew. Um, yeah, that, but he, at the oh. same time you have to kind of accept it. I mean, just I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I. I do. Sorry, I'm just, I mean, well, yeah, but I mean, what I'm saying is, it didn't even bother me because I knew that was happening. Like, I knew Peter Peter Mayhew wasn't going to be in episode eight after episode seven. Just seeing him, like, he could barely you know move around. So, was there a way you can but, tell though, Rick? Like, were you like? I just it's just it's the eyes. It's the eyes. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Now listen. Now here's what here's what's funny is that remember the great reveal in the Force Awakens trailer when Han comes out and he says, you know, Chewie, we're home? Well, that's actually that actor in that scene. That's not Peter yeah. Mayhew either. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. So, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but, there, but you couldn't tell there, but in that close-up in the Millennium Falcon with the yeah. little... Well, now I'm freeze framing it, and now I can kind of. Yeah, you can, can just tell, and you're, and that's okay. You're going to be able to yeah. tell because it's not him, and that's okay. Yeah. They have to move on. All right, so listen. So, here's what I'd like to do. I want to break down a couple of uh, my favorite parts, and then get people's reaction to it. Is that fair? Oh, yeah. your favorite part. Well, I well, hold, hold on. Let's oh. just do all the things oh. that you want to do. Hold on, <laughs> and just wh- like it's your show. Or and, w- w- and while I'm doing that, <laughs> feel free to bring up anything you want to bring up. Okay. All right. So oh, I will. Paul, on that. Paul, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw the first one at you. Then, Brian, you still with oh. me? Yep. Okay. I'm going to throw the <laughs> second one at you as our as our right. honorable guest. Are you guys ready? I will be ready. I'm just hanging out with my woods. All stuff. right. So here's the re- – and Paul, <laughs> Paul, one of, the re- one of the reasons I'm choosing you for this one, sir, because you're my, my, yes, sir. my prequel soul brother. You're my – you know, yes. right, right. We, you will defend those films with me, even with the most hateful, Absolutely. hateful naysayers like Justin. So, Absolutely. Um, 
the opening shot. Okay. Well, for, yes. first of all, let's just say this: the the music. Did, did anybody else get sort of like this imperial march? Yes. Yes. Little, uh, yeah. Little hint of that. That's my note. Yeah, it's awesome, dude. God, it's awesome. It's just, it, but but here's the problem. It's just, it's just tailor made trailer music. So I, I, it's, I used to get excited right. for trailer music, and now I'm just like, eh, okay, because I know it's yeah. not, it has nothing to do with the. With, no, I mean, I don't want to downplay. Don't think it's made uh, okay. for the trailer. It sounds yeah. very. No, like, no, 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 it was, but it's not. As in, it's not John Williams. Like right. John Williams worked like on Christmas the original movie. trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> like the. Um, serious. I'm serious though. Yeah, yeah, like like the original teaser. Nobody let me lose my train of thought on my prequel thing, though. Okay, <laughs> really yeah. quick, really, really quick. The very first Force Awakens teaser, he conducted some music for it, and that was it. Like, and then the actual trailer for the Force Awakens, which I actually really liked a lot of that music, minus the stupid solo piano notes, um, was good. But this music is like it was fine. It was, it was whatever. It's hard to get excited about this music when it's literally just made for the trailer. Okay, right on. So anyway, moving on. Right. All right. Sorry. So, <laughs> all right. Sorry, so tangent. the very beginning, you, 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 you <laughs> Rick, how dare you? What? I, I missed that. No. Okay, so you have you you have Kylo and he's looking out the the window and yes. right. That shot to me is very prequel esque, and there's actually. Kind of an aesthetic, and it's not just that shot. There's two others, and I want to mention as well. And the, what I'm getting, what I'm getting from that shot is very much an or Obi Wan Attack of the Clones. Uh, where, oh my goodness, mm. where, where where does he discover the clone army? What is the Camino? Camino. Thank you. When he's there, mm. that's what that's what that looks like to me. It's very. Mm. It resembles that. When he's, when he's on like the uh the the or not railing or whatever the the porch or whatever thing. And he's, or balcony. That's what I was thinking of. Balcony. Right. And, uh, he's, and he, and he, and he, uh, some, uh, uh, whatever, whatever his name is goes magnificent, aren't they? Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, I never got that to yeah. be quite honest. That's fine. That's, <laughs> um, that's cool. But, but there, other, but there is other prequel stuff I feel in, in there as well, though. Let's like, get, well, I think I know. The next one. I, I think I know the next one you're going to well, go with. Well, tell me what it is, and then we'll, we'll see if it is. All yeah. right. It's, it's, I believe it's probably the scene where Kylo and the snow troopers are on crate, and it's from the aerial view over, like, over top of them, and mm. they're walking towards something. And mm-hmm. that mirrors a lot like when Anakin and the 501st are going to the Jedi Temple to destroy all the Jedi. At one point, there's an aerial view of them about to enter right into yeah. the main door. And that's it was very so reminiscent awesome. of that. Yep. That's a, that's a, that's a cool one as well. And the one, the one I was actually going to bring up, that's not it, but that's oh, great okay. is the, okay. the, the scene with Kylo flying his kick ass Darth Vader S new ship. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that, that whole sequence and, and just the, the choreography of the, of the ships, if you will, it looks a lot mm-hmm. like the, the opening of Revenge of the Sith, the dogfight with Anakin and Obi-Wan. Mm-hmm. No, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't think about that actually, but it well, actually, Ryan, that you agree with me on that, sense. right? Yeah, I, br- I brought that up to you when we were just talking on the phone uh, last night. I was like, we were on the same wavelength about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And perhaps it was you that put that in my in my life. We were bouncing off each other. But yeah, so those and, and to me, I just think that's cool. I like that. There's just there's sort of this aesthetic. Okay, so Brian, let's talk something else, man. Okay, is there anything more intense than a beloved actress that's that's deceased? That's a legend in this franchise. That we also know oh. that we also know that the next director, which is now as we know going to be J.J. Uh, Abrams, and he has to tackle the fact that that Carrie Fisher's gone and, and Leia is not going to be in this next film. And so I find it interesting in the marketing that they choose a scene with Kylo talking about you know I have to get rid of the past. And if you guys notice too, he smashes his mask as well. There's something symbolic about yeah. that, right? And then so you don't good. see you don't see him in the mask for the rest of the trailer. Right, right. right. And I don't know if that's you know, right. We don't know the timeline is but still mm-hmm. that's 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 definitely intentional for us to see that. But mm-hmm. for him to be targeting his mother and then that look on her face, which I personally think is is great. And he said to get rid of the to, to move forward you have to kill the past and he, he, and then you, there's a moment where it's like he's about to kill his mom, or at least that's what we're led to believe. And don't, yeah. what do you think about that in terms of the, of, first of all, just the scene itself, assuming that it's in context. And then secondly, don't, do you find that interesting? I think it's very powerful that they chose that. And, and, and quite frankly, a little bold. What, do you, what, what are your thoughts? 
Well, I, I think it's I think it's powerful. I think it's bold. It's it's uh, definitely a teaser in the worst and best way possible. So you've got um, uh, they're they're teasing the death of a character whose actor is already passed, um, which you would assume that they're going to try to find some way to kill them off anyway. But they're making it into this is the evolution of another character. If it happens and it does, you, you never actually see it happen. Which good, thank you. I'm glad you didn't show it. But uh, um, I, I I love the way they shot it. I love the way they teased it. I hate the way they shot it. I hate the way they teased it. Um. <laughs> is, is is it is it possible that she's the, the character's intending? It's they're intending for her to to die in this film because they didn't change anything after her death. Nothing. So they say. Right. And then in episode nine, she's there as a force ghost, which is obviously something <laughs> very possible. And is that do do you think that maybe she that he kills her in this film? I think he does. Um, I, I, they've teased it. Otherwise, honestly, it hadn't been in my brain. I was wondering what they were going to do with it. But the fact that they teased it so blatantly, it's going to come down to his decision whether he does or not. And that's a question. Yeah. Right. So, which is, which I, me, is, me and Rick were talking about that. I think if they did kill her in this film and, or Luke for that matter, it would just come across as really lazy for, to me. But that's it just- come across as lazy. So let me let me throw something in there. Now, we did see uh, uh, Finn and Phasma fighting. But what was interesting is before we saw them fighting, we saw Finn striding very angrily, very determinately with stormtroopers at his back in a imperial uniform. Yeah. And there was a piece where I'm scratching my head going, who's about to rise? Who's about to fall? Is yeah. there is is there a switch? And that's, um, a, good, that's a good point. And, and here's the thing. Yeah. Is it in Ryan? Is it lazy if if this is what he has to do to really fulfill his own destiny. Right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe they'd not. Have to, maybe. They'd, have to, they'd have to do more than they did in the first movie. It'd have to be more than just like, it's my destiny. I have to do this. They'd have to like give me more story stuff than just that for me right. to, to be okay with it. If yeah. that makes sense. Okay. Well, so one of the, one of the pieces, if I can volunteer this and throw this out there, is uh, because you've got the interaction, or so it seems, between uh, Ray and uh, Ren, uh, between Kylo and Ray. Um, does one rise to meet the other? Does one fall to meet the other? Hmm. And I think that was one of the teases. And and showing again, showing Finn striding in the Imperial uniform. I'm I'm curious to see if there's going to be a whole shakeup as to who's good, who's bad. That'd be it's a good thing to do in the second series, in the second. Uh, well, that's what I saw the on the series. poster. The the whole poster, like Poe. Is on the side of, you know, all the dark side, right? You notice that? Like, I don't know if that. No, yeah. that's. that's I, think, I think the whole movie we're gonna see things like that. I think I've seen that in yeah. a lot of different characters in in this trailer too. Which is a great way to do a second movie in a yeah. trilogy. Yeah. Just well, think about just in the trailer alone. It's like, is Kylo and Ray are they gonna be good or bad? Is you know, is Finn g- going back to the Empire? Is is uh, Luke Skywalker good or bad? Like, I think right. it's it's deliberately making us ask those questions about a lot of these characters. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Paul, what is what does Palpatine say to Anakin in Episode Three when he talks about a certain point of view and good and evil? Right. Good as a point of view etiquette. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. It, the, the good and evil aspect of this trailer is, I think, is, is very, um, it's very baity, if you ask me. Yes. I, I think right. it's, it's ambiguous it's, on purpose. Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. that it's, I don't think Ray or anyone like that, and I, I don't think Kylo Ren is going to turn to the light side in this movie. I don't think Ray is going to turn to the dark side. Um, I, I think that again, these these films are are generated at you know children supposed to be they're, they were supposed to be now all the ratings are PG thirteen, which is interesting because you know all the years before Revenge of the Sith they were all PG. Um, and, well, and mostly re- also because Revenge of the Sith, PG-13 PG-13 wasn't Revenge, created, Revenge wasn't of the Sith was was borderline rated could have been rated R. Honestly, it, yeah, it, yeah, it could have well, it could have been able, if it would have left some more intense scene stuff. Oh God! No. Um, don't don't go there. <laughs> when An- when, An- um, when Anakin so- is burning, that's a horrifying image. Oh, it's it's super horrifying. So yeah, I you know the whole thing. I, I like that. Here's the thing though. I like the idea of it. it, it be, it's a it's a big deal, and it's it's something that is is in the background of because that's what happened with Luke, and you know very because the viewers all thought could Luke turn to the dark side, you know? Yeah. And when he's and the beauty of return of the Jedi is that he's wearing black. So you think like, Oh man, did Luke go dark? Like yeah. what's going on? But in, but in, in the end, you, you really don't know why he wore black. Cause you know, cause you know, at the, at, at, from a Lucas standpoint, he was like, this is what the Jedi wear. 
And then he went back and went, nope, well, I don't. And so I really have no idea why he's wearing black. He's trying to, like, you know, like trying to, like, identify with his father. I don't know. I mean, you could say that, I guess. But it looks cool. Uh, the green it looks mega badass. I love Return of the Jedi Luke's outfit. It's amazing. So, um, I, but, so anyway, yeah, I, I just, I think that it's, oh, sorry, I hit my hand on the desk. Um, no, I, I just think that it's, I don't think anyone's going to flip flop in this, in this film. I think it's, I think it's better if they don't, to be honest. And let's keep it simple, but let's keep, but let's keep the intensity of its possibility because that to me is mm-hmm. enticing to see those situations. Well, what, what do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, that's and, and the, ten, the temptation of going from to one side or the other is, is, uh, is something that's in both. Tri- uh, other trilogies also. Well, let me let me just throw this to the group. So, what what do you guys think that Mark Hamill meant when he said that at first he was taken aback by the direction that Luke was going in, and he wasn't sure he liked it or not, and he warmed up to it. Now he says he loves it, and I don't know how much of that is him just doing PR or whatnot. But yeah. what Justin, what do you think? What do you think that could have meant for Mark Hamill? I mean, I, I I personally, I'll say this, and then and then please answer. Yeah. I feel, I feel like we're about to get a Star Wars movie. Is this movie going to be great? God, I hope so. And right now, I think Disney's two for yeah. two. I've got a lot of faith in Kathleen Kennedy, and uh, the trailers look amazing. And so, yeah, I've yeah. Got, I have a lot of faith in this film, but it doesn't mean that it's a it's a surefire home run. This this thing could suck. I mean, I don't know. I just doubt it, right? Mm-hmm. But what I do think, I think this one is going to be a Star Wars film for the ages by virtue of surprises. Yeah. I, I think this one's going to turn, mm-hmm. turn turn us on our heads. So, Justin, what do you mm-hmm. think? What do you think about that and Mark Hamill's uh, like uh, initial apprehension? Is this about another this? Empire yeah. in the making? Well, I, but, I mean, yeah, but Brian, yeah, that's but, but, what I'm that's what I'm thinking. Just because if the, if if they're going to do something that's crazy and off the beaten path, this is the film to do it because it's the yeah. second film in the trilogy. Well, and maybe that's one of the reasons they're going to bring JJ back. To like, you got to bring this mo- <laughs> M- 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 MF or back full circles. We're about to go off the rails well, with this bitch. Can, but anyway, Justin, go ahead. Think about, but hold on, but Justin, yeah, go ahead. A, yeah, a character like you know Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker is really like Mark Hamill has two things. He's got the Joker, which is pretty much is his. He owns it. It's in his pocket. He can go back to it every time he says he's going to quit. He goes back to it. No one cares. No one complains. But, but, this but, is, but can this they? But can they redo the Killing Joke for me? Especially since I love that comic. So much. <laughs> I anyway, I, I'm. I mean, too. That, that thing is crap. All anyway, right, go, so go, ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, point, sorry. Like Luke Skywalker is his real face. Like in the in the public. Like like it's a signature you know, acting vernacular role. Vernacular of, yeah. of when you think about Luke Skywalker, a lot of people don't know he does both. You know, they're like, what the heck? It's like surprising to them. So Luke Skywalker is kind of like, that's who he is. And, um, I know an article you're talking about, Rick. I remember reading it. He was kind of like, I don't know if I, I don't know if I like this direction for Luke Skywalker. And, um, who knows? And the fact that I think, I think he's playing coy, you know, I think he's playing like giving people to draw their own conclusions because that can mean anything. I mean, it could be, oh, I didn't want Luke Skywalker to go all white bread in the future, you know, or I didn't want like Luke Skywalker to to go dark. We we don't know, and I think he's just making it interesting in in articles. I don't think I think that's all it is. I don't think there's anything else to it. I mean, like, he's gonna take this job. No one else is gonna be Luke Skywalker. No one else is like, okay, well, we're gonna have you know Kiefer Sutherland play Luke Skywalker. It, it's it's him, right? It's 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 his role. It's his for the taking, and he, I think it was just kind of a comment. Right. Nothing more than nothing less. If, if if I was Lucasfilm, I would take Mark Hamill and I would put him like in in the Fortress of Solitude for the next year <laughs> until he until he's no, done with no. Episode Nine. Like you're not going no, anywhere. I, <laughs> you're, you no, have, I, have, I can have what's his face playing? What's Bucky Barnes, man? That guy oh, looks like. Luke, did you guys uh, see that thing? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> not, so not, I not have to me. I have to come in and, and and talk a little bit about the Last Jedi because you know yeah. there has been, there has been reports of people who have seen the film to say it's very different. And, um, you know, it, again, that's a breath of fresh air from what, you know, we got from J.J. Abrams, which was very heavily influenced from the previous films. Brian, which, Brian, know, and gonna... Brian, why don't you tell Paul what you call him? Who, Jar Jar Abrams? Okay, thank you. Okay, go ahead, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> I, I, I think that this, the fact that this is, this is the longest Star Wars film at two hours and 35 minutes, which. Oh, is that confirmed? Start, wait, wait. I, 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 th- I thought, I thought it clocked right behind Attack of the Clones, so it's actually longer than Clones, huh? It's wow. long. It's long. It's the longest one, as far as, wow. I, as I know. I thought yeah. I saw two thirty-five. No, that's been, that, that, that means Attack of the Clones is second. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So. It's the longest Star Wars film, and I think that it has, you know, what we're hearing from people that it's very different, and, you know, 
and, and as we know, for people who are in, involved in Star Wars, you know, fandom, uh, that is sometimes a very uh, changes or different being different and changes a lightning rod for Star Wars fans. You know, whether you're a hardcore, you know, casual or whatever. So I think this film. I'll be honest. I'm gonna go on. I'm gonna go on record now and say I don't think this is gonna be a slam dunk like critical success mm-hmm. from a from a uh, not not when I say critical su- success. I, I don't want to say from the critics. I'm saying critical su- success for the fans. I think it's gonna be down the middle of really? what people. Are, I, I really do think so. I think they're and people you're not are talking love, box office. You're just talking no, post the it, films. Or yeah, I'm talking about post film. Okay. Like I, I think how a lot of people are with with the For- Force Awakens now. There's a lot of like, yeah, people who love it. And there's a lot of people who are going, yeah, a little too much. Like. You know, this, but people still understand. I feel like people still understand it, but it's starting to kind of like lose its luster a little bit. So it's casually going down. I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's literally going to be bam, down the middle. We're on this fence. You're on that fence. And there's going to be like, you know, blood boiling, you know, and saying you're dumb because you don't think this and this is, this is a great decision. And, you know, that's kind of the way I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a good Star Wars film, but I think it's going to be, there's going to be lots of stuff in that film that's probably going to, you know, I'm assuming anyway, because See, I'm, we're, I'm good with that. Yeah. I'd rather have that than gray area. Meh, I could take it or leave it. I'd much rather have yeah, either. I love it. No, I agree. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be enough that happens in it that we're going to be all arguing about it until we see episode nine. Yeah, that's true. Right, absolutely. So, on that note, let me, Brian. Let me ask you this: What is your, where was your anticipation level for this film before uh, you saw this trailer? Where is it now since you've seen the trailer? And and by the way, at any point, you just want to also talk about some of your favorite moments, whatever. While you're while you're answering those questions, let it let it let her rip. I just want to get your pulse on this right now. Uh, I I think I'd uh, had enough other things going on, and uh, there were enough other movies I was really looking forward to. I think it had kind of hit on my back burner. I'm loving the trailer. Uh, the trailer looks absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I'm a huge, huge uh, fan of the uh, AT-AT walkers, the AT-ATs. Uh, it was neat in the uh, the opening piece to see drop ships in the background um, for the AT-ATs. Uh, then you get down to the planet's surface, and they've got something now that looks like it's two to three times the size of an AT-AT walker. Holy cow. Um, but it's easy. So I'm, I'm curious. I want to know, but it's, it's easy just to, uh, with CGI, just to make something bigger. We'll just make something that's twice the size and call it good. Yay. Um, so I'm really curious to see what they're going to do with it. Why did they need these walkers that are two to three times the size? And, uh, the aesthetic of them, though, I was digging because it looks like a gorilla walking on its knuckles rather than the ATAT, which looks like a tall dog. Well, so that's a, that's a great, that's a great freaking visual, dude. Thank you for that. Yeah. Like, so it's, frickin', or, or it's a sloth. Those are freaking nails curled gor- under or something gor- like that. Gorillas on their knuckles. I'll, I'll never get that out of my head. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm, I'm curious. What is it? Why are they? How are they going to justify this other than just making something new and shiny to sell toys? Yeah. I'm hoping. Well, they're, they're on gonna... crate, right? They're on crate, correct? So yeah, I, I would they, assume they are going to have some specific function to whatever kind of mining or whatever operation they're doing. Like, and that's the question right. I was wondering. Is like. Why? Why is crate so important? What is all this red stuff like? Why is a lot of the stuff centered on this planet beyond it looking cool? And I'm sure that there's a good reason. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm eager to find out. There there was enough ambiguity in the trailer that uh, I don't feel like anything's been handed to me. Um, and uh, so so it does. It gets the wheels turning. I'm looking forward to that. As long as the rest of the movie holds up with that, don't don't spoon feed me. Let let the story come to me and let me discover what the new evolution is i love that bring it on okay let me ask you this um, your your yeah. gr- your girlfriend you walked you walked her all through the franchise at this point yes and she yes and she's been uh, absolutely incredible about it good for her <laughs> every, every you're she's caught up on every film right yeah just yeah. just curious just kind of just in 30 seconds tell us what are her overall okay so just a quick backstory brian's girlfriend had never seen a star wars movie ever and just a few months ago, slowly... Before inter- we started dating. I want to say before we started dating, she hadn't seen it. She hadn't been dating me for a while. Right. There's, there's, yeah. So yeah. I'm at his studio, and we're talking, and he's... Hey, last night, my girlfriend and I watched episode two, episode one, or whatever. I said, oh, really? And he he filled me in, so I'm just curious. So what, what were her overall thoughts? What was her favorite Star Wars movie? What was her least favorite? It has nothing to do with The Last Jedi trailer. I don't care. I'm going to ask anyway. Okay, fair enough. Uh, she hasn't seen the trailer yet. Um Ah, uh, she's going to listen to this, uh, this podcast, so I'm not going to put too many words in her mouth, but I do know that, uh, <laughs> Rogue One, uh, probably stand out by far. 
um, was was her favorite. Oh, and she's recent, right? Remember, because from what I remember, she didn't really watch all the movies until like, she she hadn't seen yeah, any of them. That's the so point. She hasn't she didn't see any yeah. of them until just a couple months ago, a few months yeah, ago. Yeah, so we, we went through the whole thing uh, uh, with a vengeance uh, uh, in a relatively short period of time, so that we could see the movies that are coming up. And uh, uh, I'm pretty sure Rogue One, hands down, which I honestly, for me, I'm I'm right there. Look, so, when, when, when Marty and I, that's my, Marty's my wife, and when her and I were dating, we weren't even living together yet. I, I remember we went through, we, we watched, at the time, there were just the six from the two the two trilogies. And not only did I, did I say, I have to marry this girl because she loves Star Wars, she loved <laughs> she loves all six of them. Like, she doesn't sit there and say, to her, it's like Empire Strikes Back, Phantom Menace, whatever, it's all Star Wars, it's all awesome. And that's that's my wife, so it's, it's, it's great. And, and Paul, your wife's like rad too, right? She's all into... <laughs> Pop culture and Star Wars. No, no. She hates Star Wars. No. She hates Star Wars. Being serious, she, oh, oh, but she's still, but she's still rad though, right? Uh, she's all right. Wow. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, lo- I love my wife. I know. I know. I know. You're a proud. Look, we're all proud hu- husbands here. She yeah. loves. Yes, she loves yes. Thai. Well, well, yeah, yeah. She loves Thai food. She loves Thai food over everything. Um, no, she, she, she loves. <laughs> She's a, we're big fans of Blade Runner and we, and we saw 2049 and she, we couldn't stop gushing about that movie. So she likes mm-hmm. good stuff, but she's this, she never got hit with Star Wars. Her parents weren't really into Star Wars and I tried to show her the prequels first, which kind of backfired in me a little bit. <laughs> but, but to be honest though, cause I wanted to show them them in order, but at the same time, she would have hated them no matter what. Like, I just know that. I, I don't think, listen, I, I don't want to go off on this cause this is like a podcast in itself. I, I don't think that you, you don't show, Look, I like the Phantom Menace, but it's the least, my least favorite Star Wars film by far. You don't start, yeah. you don't start Star Wars with episode. You don't show somebody episode one as their introduction to Star Wars. You just don't do it. I think, I think, yeah, the, I think the film should be, I, <laughs> I think the film should be watched in the order they were released because the reveal of as Vader is, is his father, all that stuff is you got it. That that has to be a mystery as much as yeah, possible. Right. Anyway, anyway, well, so she discovered something called the guillotine method, where I think you do uh, four, five, and then you start one and two. Yeah. One and two, or two and three. Any order. order. The fa- yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Any order. Yeah. So, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, Paul. Yes, sir. Your, your anticipation level, based prior to the trailer, now, has it changed? Um, You know, it's Star Wars, so this is kind of like a, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's like, I'm, I'm, j- I'm jazzed like crazy. Um, You know, I think about Star Wars all the time, and... I, I I want you know it sucks because getting my tickets you know I I, I have a little bit later showing than um <laughs> you know my well no, only only at nine twenty not at seven o'clock mm-hmm. because you know I because I found out that tickets were being on sale when I was driving home from work and so <laughs> yeah because they never announced the time they just said it the day yeah, yeah. they're just like oh here you go and I'm just like what and so uh. Yeah, I was not happy about that, by the way. Um, because for the Force Awakens and Rogue One, they announced at this time we're going to release tickets. Yeah. And, and then, uh, anyway, but a, a good friend of mine met, uh, managed to get me some tickets with for my wife and my brother. And, um, so yeah, my anticipation level is, is huge. I mean, I'm going the next more, the next day, at, um, in the afternoon. So like, and I'm, I'm taking the whole day off of work to, you know, really just to decompress it. I mean, this is, so I take Star Wars very seriously, you know, and uh, embarrassingly so, I guess. But, you know, um, there's a lot of things in this movie that I, I really can't wait to see. Like, I want to see what the truth behind Ray is. I want to know what, you know, yeah. more truth about Snoke. And there's lots, and I'm scared to find out some of these answers, but, uh, you know, and, and, and one of the, really quickly, I, I wanted to add this really fast. Um, you guys were talking about Mark Hamill and how great he was in the trailer. And I, I want to say, yes, like he, he looked great and yeah. he acted great. And I was really impressed. Now, I, how ironic would it be? And I'm, I'm hoping this happens that he would have a renaissance after the last Jedi. Like people are like, Oh man, this guy, you know, he can still act. You know, he's still a really good actor. Um, how ironic would it be that Luke would be the thing that kind of ruined his career, you know? And then going back to Luke would actually restart his career. Yes. <laughs> well, it's a, it's, 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 yeah. How well, cool from, would that be? For, first of all, from, from, a, from a film, from yeah, a film standpoint, not absolutely. From a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I, it's a, it was a different time then. Typecasting doesn't really exist anymore, right? Exactly. You, right? Yeah, it exactly. just doesn't. You can, you can, you can play. Because uh, the genre films are just like commonplace. Yeah. Right. Across the board. Yeah. Right. Mark yeah, Hamill exactly. for Pulp Fiction Two. Right. Nope. Nobody. 
when they were talking about casting Michael Keaton in Spider-Man Homecoming, not one person sat in a boardroom and said, yeah, but you know, he's famously known as Batman. That would be weird and confusing. And that, that, that those days are over yeah, exactly. still, but yeah, yeah I, I want to see him come back. And the reason I do, because he's my Harrison Ford, you know what I mean? He's mm. my, he's my rock star. And, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that he's just, he's a geek uh, and yeah. Oh yeah. And I, and I love geeks and he's, that's because I am one. And I, uh, I just, anyway, he's freaking just, I, I, I love the guy. I just, I just do. Yeah, Hamill, Hamill looks great. I mean, I feel like this is going to be his best since Corvette Summer back in 1978. Oh, Lord. J- 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 hey, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, Jr. Hey, Paul, I'm going I'm to ask one, one, one question for you real fast, too, so then I want to get into anticipation, yeah, le- anticipation levels for everybody else. When Snoke mm-hmm. is talking at the end and he's talking about when I met you, you were this, and then you, you were powerful, mm-hmm. but you are still one of the most beautiful uh, things or what, what, well, not beautiful, what, what? That's not beautiful, no, 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 not beautiful. What, what were you uh, watching? Uh, Marvelous. Know, are you uh, watching? Come on. Help, la, 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 la. Come on. Help me out here. So he says, what does he say? He said, you were the most, and also the, one of the most, oh man, I th- should have written it down. Damn it. Well, he, he talks about how powerful that, you know, they are. Because well, first Snoke but, is talking in the very beginning, raw. which I don't think, oh, I don't think raw he's talking. Energy. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think he's talking to Ray. Everyone's like, he's talking to Ray. It's like, no, 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 no. No, I think, I think so. he's talking. Yeah, I agree with you, Paul. He's, he's, talk, he's, he's talking to Kylo Ren. And well, yeah. There's a, we, there's we, a couple I, fan I, things. There's a couple fan things that I got I got to debunk right now that I think is like, and maybe if I'm wrong, I'll eat crow. No, the first it, thing is do. that Snoke is talking to Kyle, the, to Ray in the beginning of the trailer. Just no freaking way. No, like no, I'm sorry, no, like, wait, wait, not the beginning, but the, make, the, the end. Yeah, not the beginning. Yes, not yet. Yeah, not the beginning. Yes, that's but what I'm people saying. are saying. He, he yeah, was no, I know, time, no, no. But I'm talking about at the end. It was pretty good. when he and sitting. then also Luke. Yeah, and also with Luke, when he's like, I've encountered this before, and the one's like, he's talking about Darth Vader. I'm like, are you freaking He's talking about Kylo Ren. He's talking about Kylo I know. I'm just like, guys. That's so clear. That's that, 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 that's so clear. You know what was cool? I mean, that was so clear to me because they both, they have both Snoke and Luke use that word raw. You know what I mean? And, and that's, Ooh, that's, yes. they do. Good point. Yes. Yeah. And that was very deliberate. You know, I've, Snoke is like, you've got this raw power. And then there's Luke saying, I've never seen this kind of raw power before until, you know, only once before or whatever. And so it's clear that they're both talking about Kylo Ren. And now they're seeing something else happen with, with Ray. And we see Ray come into the picture towards the end of the trailer. So it makes total sense. Well, and Absolutely. what and whatever he says at the end, he says, it, I, "I'm going to paraphrase this." No, it wasn't beautiful. Thank you for correcting that. Um, but <laughs> but he says that you were, you know, one of the most powerful things I've ever seen. But you were also inspiring, or whatever. There's something else he says. He he does a little, he does a beat, and he transitions. My 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 thing is this, and in that instance, I think he's talking to, talking about Ray. You're talking to Ray. And that in that scene, I think he's talking about Kylo or talking to Kylo at the beginning. But I think in the last part, he's talking to Ray. Well, he's, he's yeah. He he tells her to she to fulfill your destiny. Whoever he's talking. Well, to. He could, yeah, and I'm saying that's what I'm, I think he's talking to Ray. And I, honest to God, I think she's going to be a Kenobi. <laughs> I think <laughs> I, th- I think I think she's going to be a Kenobi. I really do. I think Just I think stop. I think I, I think Just Obi- stop. I'm not stopping. I'm telling you, they're announcing the solo film. Ewan gives her the most important line in the Force Awakens. I don't care what anybody says. It was. And it was the only scene in that flashback sequence in The Force Awakens that it was a new line. And they brought Ewan McGregor in. He rode in on his motorcycle, because he's freaking Obi-Wan and he's awesome, to record one little line of Force Awakens. That was not, that wasn't, hey, just do this little thing for us and hey, thanks for your contribution to the franchise. No. Nope. 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 No way. No, Ewan McGregor did not come in on his motorcycle to say, Ray, these are your first steps. Just to do that line. Didn't happen. Okay. Justin. <laughs> All right. So Justin, look. Yeah, buddy. It is this is Good a bat you. this is a Batman site, right? Yep. I it is. I promise you I love Batman as much as you do. I know. Uh, it's he's he's literally I tell this I tell people all the time when I get worked up about Justice League and and whatnot, it's, it's the same Rick shoe that got worked up about Batman Forever. They got bat- worked up about Batman Returns. I don't like seeing my best friend misrepresented, yo. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I want the Batman. I, I don't hold him to the same standards as Thor or Iron Man. I don't care that some of those <laughs> movies are a little cheesy and fluffy and don't and have too much CGI because that's all they are to me is popcorn. They're great. But Batman is like he. I take it very seriously, and I don't yeah. like I don't like what I'm seeing in, in this Justice League trailer. So I get uh, I wow. get I get I, I get pissed off about like 
why are they why is my batman he should be in a, an amazing epic film right now and instead we got to get him through this this justice league what, thing what is going on right now hold on let, yeah. me, let me get to it set me up set me up no, 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 oh, yeah. okay. thank you thank you Right, so that's that's where this this comes from, right? So I don't like Star Wars better than Batman. Come on, Bat- Star Wars is a distant second, but right now I'm more excited for the Force Awakens as a movie than by far mm-hmm. that I'm with Justice League. So my point to all that diatribe is this: I know that deep down in your like in your bone marrow, you agree with me, and I just want you to have an opportunity. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to give you an opportunity to just come over. To the light, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to hold your hand and you fulfill your destiny. Fulfill your destiny, <laughs> right. and you're going to admit here on we this can rule the galaxy as father and son to thousands oh, of people man. that are going to be listening to the show. And thank you all for your support, by the way. Uh, that uh, around the world, I might add, but that you know that this film is going to be epic, and Justice League is problematic. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Okay, um, so my 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 thoughts on Star Wars. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm excited for this movie. I can't wait to see it. Um, but with the caveat, I mean, if you want to go with, into the Justice League situation, my heart has always been Justice League. My heart has always been Batman and DC, and I, it would have to be the most epic Star Wars movie of all time for me to get more excited about it. And I don't, I, like I said in the beginning, I think the trailer is great. I think the trailer is good. Is it? Does it get me excited for Star Wars? I'm already like I'm gonna go see the movie, but it hasn't pushed me over the edge. Like, you know what got me excited? Not even, let's talk about the first uh, Thor Ragnarok trailer. That thing got me so pumped for Thor Ragnarok. Like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to watch that movie. I don't have to watch any more trailers for that because it did a great job of getting me excited. Uh, Star Wars hasn't gotten me excited yet. I'm, I'm ready to go. I have questions. It's got me curious. Like, hmm, I'm curious about that. I'm curious about this. I'm going to go see the movie now. Like as far as Batman, I don't, I don't feel Batman's been done wrong in these trailers. Like I feel like he looks the best he's ever looked in any type of movie. Like bring, you know, let, let's step in the ring on that one. I think he looks awesome in everything I've seen. But uh, oh, he does absolutely. Far, he does. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I mean, I don't you, think you, he's you, being you, done you, wrong. You know, I. Well, no, I get you. I get right. you. That, but I don't think he's being done wrong. I think I think the way the sausage is made has been kind of weird. But other than that. It, that it remains to be seen. We'll we'll talk about that November eighteenth. As of now, I'm going to modify my statement. It's not just Batman. Yeah. Ben Affleck's Batman deserves better than Suicide Squad and BBS. Boom. Yes. Well, oh, there you go. Well, right. and again, right? That's fine. Thanks, Ryan. Right? That's I'm, yes. I'm saying. I, I clapped. And right, Affleck's yeah. Batman specifically. I'll even I'm going to drill it down. And by the way, so I'll, Paul, I'll, I'll Paul, let Rose McGowan on if, that one. If, if Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if Paul and Brian are like, where is this thing going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we we have to. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a it's a totally lost podcast. A, 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 a lot of this is it, a lot of this is like our 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 banter on Twitter. It's also the fact yeah. that it is a this is still a Batman podcast, and we have to yeah we have to address. I'm this. more pumped for Justice League. If that's your answer, all yes. right, fair, League, fair enough. I'm, I have I will spend more money on Justice League than I will on Star Wars. Fair enough. Mic drop. I tried so. Did you did you answer Hashtag the question? Justin Lee. Are you? But you you said you're excited for the trailer. But so, yeah. did, did did this move the needle for you on anticipation at all, or just no? No, not at all. Just neutral. No. Okay. It was yeah. I, and I, and here's the thing. Let me be honest. I watched it so much last night. Brought my kids in. I took them out of bed. Said, "Let's watch the Star Wars trailer real quick." And my son, my eight year old son, who I love, and he's my heart. He said, "Dad, let's watch the Justice League trailer again." <laughs> I said, "Okay." <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I hope he loves yeah. it. Hey and, and it, his favorite. hey, and it goes to an interesting conversation, and Paul alluded to this earlier, is and, and we had a, a funny private text message today, an inside joke about who's excited for Justice League, who's excited for Star Wars, what demographic. I don't think, I think the average 12-year-old, especially little boy, I think they're stoked for Justice League. I don't think Star Wars is a, a 12-year-old franchise anymore, uh, for 12-year-olds anymore. I, I think that it was... Totally agree. No. Yeah, I think it was originally like that. Uh, Lucas cer- certainly started the prequels that way. Episode one certainly was, but 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 even by the time he finished the prequels, Revenge of the Sith was not for kids at all. Right? At, no, I, mean, I, I can't I can't watch I can't let Hadley watch that until she's double digits. You know, uh, that's going to be a tough one. And and so and then you get into the Disney films, and then Rogue One's a freaking war movie. Right? I mean, right? Yeah. It's Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> it's a war movie. 
and has the most horrifying Darth Vader murdering sequence <laughs> ever, and it's <laughs> awesome. It's, it's, I took uh, my kids. Yeah, to yeah. yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's like a it's like a it's like Full Metal Jacket meets Friday the Thirteenth Part Three, you know, in three D. Yeah. Um, well, but you've already got like five generations of people that are fans and uh, loyal fans of Star Wars, so I don't think he's necessarily worried about, or they are not necessarily worried about getting new kids in. I don't think yeah. so either. I, but here's the thing: I think, and look, I don't have any data to back this up. This is me pulling this out of my ass, but it's, but I have an educated ass. Okay. I, I look at this and say that, and I didn't get us nothing. That'd be a smart ass or a wise ed, ed, ass. Educated ass. No, anyway, moving on. But I, I just feel like Star Wars now, they is being more, it's targeting more the late, late teens and, and then like early mid twenties and above. Right. I, I really do. I think yeah. that if, if you could, if you could juxtapose like the opening night of justice league at some kind of, just any suburb in America theater and Star Wars, you're going to see a younger crowd at Justice League, and you're going to see a little older crowd at Star Wars. And it's funny because the franchise didn't start that way, right? And it just has kind of become that. And Paul, like you said earlier, like is 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 what is Last Jedi rated, Paul? Do you know? PG thirteen. Is it PG thirteen? Pretty sure. Wow. So that's the new yeah. normal, huh? There you have it. So well, anyway, so anyway, yeah. back back to your son. So he wanted to see Justice League over uh, over Jedi. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, Ryan Haas, what's your anticipation level, buddy? Oh, well, I just I have a little, just a little bit about the the marketing and stuff like that. I, you know, the thing about Star Wars and today compared to when the original trilogy came out is that the brand has expanded. I mean, there's toys and books and there's tv shows and cartoons and there's a lot of things for all ages and everything and and just i know we're like oh man you know last jedi is so dark and it's for adults overall and stuff and that is i think true to an extent but then again at the end of the day you look at like the force awakens it made two billion dollars it's one of the biggest films of all time I, i don't think that the franchise is off the rails enough for it to just not be for everyone because of the kinds of kind of money it made. I mean, it, it shows that pretty much everyone saw it. You know what I mean? So I think star Wars is America's movie. It's America's franchise. You know, I think that's, they put, they, that's they, 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 they put it with Monday night football. I mean, yeah, right, yeah, right, that's right. What I, that, exactly. And that's, right. and that's, and that's absolutely Disney's goal. I'm, I'm sure is to keep, keep it that way for many years to come. Um, but as far as this trailer, I, I, I was already, I mean, I'm already excited about it. I'm already going to see it, you know, in contrast to the Justice League trailer. I saw the Justice League trailer and I was like, this doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, it didn't make me any more or less excited. But this one, it made me, I'm not going to say it made me more excited for The Last Jedi, but I, I appreciated it because it's got me thinking about what I could see or what could happen when the movie does come out. You know, I, I like seeing the characters. I like thinking about the story points. I, uh, you know the 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 cool my favorite line in the trailer is from Luke where he says like this is not going to go the way you think and I know that that's in the movie but I think that's also uh like a throw at the everyone watching the trailer like this movie is not going to go the way you think so yeah or or it is I mean who who you won't know until you see so you gotta go see it um the one thing that I do find interesting is I'm you know I am concerned about Snoke. Just in general, you know, it, it's it was interesting to see him for real uh, in this trailer um, for the first time. Uh, you know, talking, you know, interacting with Ray. Let's say um, he was my least favorite character by far in the Force Awakens because I'm just like, who is this guy? He's not interesting. He's like super, like like whatever. I, I very very generic feeling to me like I don't, I don't don't care about that character at all out of all the new stuff in the, in the movie um but but I so I'm concerned about what how that's all going to be handled in the in the last Jedi but but I but I think that's not a bad thing because it shows me that I care about what actually is going to happen in the movie so uh, overall I I I like the trailer I'm excited about about mm-hmm. the last Jedi that's awesome so for me I was very excited about this film. I'm even more excited now. And I think excitement is not even the right word. I'm intrigued and I'm fascinated. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good way to put it. I'm yeah, I'm fascinated. All right. We're going to get to plugs guys. This has been a really fun show. It's we're, we're, we're a little over an hour now, so we're going to wrap this up. But before we get to plugs, I want to read something from Twitter. This is amazing. Vanity fair tweeted about an hour ago. And they said, "Good." Oh, luck. this was good. <laughs> yeah, they said, "Good luck getting Kathleen Kennedy and Ryan Johnson just to explain what the Last Jedi means." We tried. Here's what they said: 
And then Ryan Johnson totally trolls them. He answers. He's like, it's Luke. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not making any secrets. It's Luke. That's who it is. <laughs> so, it's Luke, period. It's, I mean, you have to see it. Like, you have to see his response to the tweet, too. It's like, it was great. Replying to at Vanity Fair. It's Luke. <laughs> They're probably That's like, funny. uh, okay. Anyway, so, hey, Brian. So we're going to do plugs. So you and I were talking on the phone earlier. And something super freaking rad is going on in your life, man. Tell us about it. Well, I'm actually making dinner right now. I'm kind of uh, kind of excited to be having a little bit of that. Um, <laughs> that was a bad joke. No laughs. All right, fine. Um, <laughs> headed up to uh, headed up to Chicago here on the 21st. A uh, couple of the projects that I got to work on are have been included in a new app called Industry TV. Uh, they're going to be showing um, pseudo Netflix kind of kind of format, but for independent filmmakers. Oh, cool. So we've got a couple of projects that are on there, and as a lead actor on both of those projects, I have been invited to go walk the red carpet. Uh, the whole thing's being hosted by Mario Lopez, and we're going to have entertainment news and everything else out there. So we get to go get dressed up, go up to Chicago, and walk down a red carpet, which is kind of cool. That's super cool, man, and you're going to yeah. be like hobnobbing with the stars. What up? Door. Well, they let me in the door. There's no telling who else is going to be there. Right? Uh, is, do, you, do you have a plus one on this? Well, you know, no, I don't. I, I, I'm trying to figure out how to get her up there, but uh, not on this one. Not on this one. Okay. Anything else you just want to plug? Uh, yeah, actually, check out on uh, uh, Facebook, uh, The Gym, an original series, uh, Gary's Gym. So it's uh, in the vein of The Office. It's a, um improvisational, awkward humor, uh, that kind of thing. I play a goofy yoga instructor. So it's similar to The Office. It just takes place in a gym. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And what's it called again? The what? It's it's called the gym. It's, just, it's called on, the gym. Okay, okay. The gym. And on Facebook, it's the gym and original series. That's amazing. And it's spelled J or G Y M, like a gym yes. or like Jim the a person. Is it a play on words? The word? gym. The gym. Okay. I didn't know. I, yeah, but I know. I didn't know it was like a play on words. So it, uh, it could be the gym, the dude. You right. Never know. Exactly. That's why I had to ask. Okay, Brian, you're it's a very talented actor and voiceover, and, and oftentimes when I have auditions and I get to have an opportunity to get put on tape, so I don't have to fly to New Orleans or or drive to Austin or whatever. I go to Brian's studio and he does it, and he has a really uncanny ability to. He, I mean, you you could be a director. You really could. You're, I you're, am you're, a director. You're you're. you're Okay. <laughs> Jesus, touche. All right. You're, you're a director. All right. I, am a I appreciate it. You keep telling people I'm talented and maybe they'll, uh, they'll believe well, you eventually. But I'm just, all I want to say is that you, 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 you make my auditions better and, and I appreciate it. And if you're an actor in the Dallas area and really if you're an actor anywhere in the inter- intercontinental USA, Brian does great, uh, headshots. He's one of the best in, 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 in Dallas and there's a lot of great ph- photographers in Dallas and he's in that, He's in the top, man. He's really good. So, Chatlin Photography. Chatlin Photography. Okay. Paul, sir, where can we find you on Twitter, and what would you like to plug? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Herman22 with two N's, um, a.k.a. P-Thug. Um, yeah. You can find my <laughs> you can find my uh, Star Wars podcast at Blaster Cannon. Cannon is C-A-N-O-N. Uh, so, it's at Blaster Cannon Pod. Um, and you can, uh, we're on part of the Den of Geek podcast network. A lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, so check me out on there. And listen, I don't want to bring up something loaded and depressing, uh, as we're exiting the show, but we are going to go out on the show with, with Tom Petty. And I know that you were, uh, a big fan oh, yeah. and I am Huge as well. Fan. Yeah, I saw that. And I, I don't think, I don't think I'm quite as big of a fan as you are. Just, I could just tell that you, he's one of your favorites. He's, yeah, he's, yeah. he's one of mine as well. And I've, I've been listening to him since I was a kid and his music and his songs are just, God, they're just, they're just, it's like a, it's like a soundtrack from second grade all the way until the day he died for me. And mm-hmm. fortunate. So mm-hmm. I'm sorry as a music lover and musician, uh, for your loss. Yeah. I know that was, I know that was, that one was hard. So I'm going to have Bill take us out with, uh, with Tom Petty. Okay. All right. Cool, man. All right. So Justin, what do you want to plug, sir? Yeah, just check out uh, Let's Go Podcast and Let's Go Comic Show. Uh, the last one was pretty funny. I, I just had a good rant on Marvel's Inhumans. If you love <laughs> terrible television, you should watch Marvel's Inhumans because that's a worse show on television. Is it worse than Iron Fist? Yeah, it's it's the same Dude, show. Dude, Iron Fist terrible. is not – I think Iron Fist wasn't as bad as everyone said it was. Yeah, Iron I agree. Fist is okay. It's just – It's watchable. It, was but, the, it wasn't yeah. the best out of what the Netflix stuff is, but – 
you know, Marvel's been hitting, you know, they hit the bullseye pretty close. And this is the first one where they slipped in a piece of dog poop and shot up in the sky and it sucks. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Hot take, it's trash juice. It's trash juice. <laughs> and that's a great segue to Ryan Hoss. Cause didn't, <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't you coin that phrase? Isn't trash juice yours? Cause I love that, by the way. No, no it, it's trash juice it's, is mine. It's, <laughs> is it Justin's? I'm, it's I'm just, makeup. I'm just yeah. asking. I mean, you guys are like, no, oh, it's Justin. It's Justin. I don't, anytime someone says trash juice, I get like seven dollars. A nickel. Oh no. Seven dollars. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I think the first time I heard it was through Ryan, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Ryan Haas, plug yes. something, good man. Uh, f- today I'm just going to plug my Twitter. Please follow me at SMB underscore Ryan. I am just – I apologize to the listeners, but I- I'm really tired of people just thinking that I don't exist on this podcast. And <laughs> whenever, whenever people do reviews, they're just like, man, you know, that last podcast was good. You know, Rick was good and Bill was good and Justin and even, even our guest last time. You know, they had really good opinions. And then I'm just like, Aww. what the Aww. heck, bro? Am I that boring? Am I, am I the, am I the boringest of, 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 of the BOF roundtablers, as it were? So, so no. make me, make me not so sad. And, and please follow me on Twitter at SMB underscore Ryan because I'm real. I promise. I'm a real. You are real. (laughs) You are, you Um, are, you are, you are my quintessential force ghost, sir. I am Rick Shue, and we want to thank you guys so much for supporting Batman on film to do these satellite shows. You know, sometimes we get a little flack online and people are like, man, this is a a Batman show. What are you doing a Star Wars show for? It's like, well, first of all, it's a free podcast. First, first of all, <laughs> first of all, Burger yeah. Burger King, the king of burgers, sells a lot of freaking chicken sandwiches. All right, so that's that's a b. Hey man, have it your way. Have it your way. Look, because we're we just love pop culture and we love all sorts of things. This this is still Batman on film and it's still going to be. I, that's why I even had to get my little Batman ran in there earlier just to get it on the record. Yeah. Right. But here's but here here's <laughs> the but right. here's the thing. If you don't like these, then just 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 skip over this part of of BOF. If you're just here for Batman, that's cool. But man, for all of you that are no, that, are, that are supporting it, it's awesome. Me, Rick. Keep listening and look. Here's the deal. <laughs> I, I want you know you know we've got we've got Brian and Zachy Hassan, and we've got now we have Paul. We have, and we, we have right. Ricky Church. We have people that are really passionate Star Wars fans that are that are talented, beautiful people. Man, I'm gonna use that word again. I'm gonna bring it back around. Beautiful. <laughs> And because I, I, for whatever reason, I was putting that in Snoke's mouth, so I'm going to put it in my own. And we, we just, we just love, we like talking about Star Wars. I'm, I'm just leaving that one alone. And one of the things I want to plug is the fact that, you know, we're going to be doing a lot more satellite shows, man. We're, we're, we're going to do a Superman episode that's just Superman. Yeah, yeah that's going to be good. And, and Bill got on my ass yesterday. He called me and said, "Where's my freaking Rocky podcast, man? What are you gonna, <laughs> you know, when, when are you going to do it? You know, I want that thing like yesterday. I was like, you, you know what? We need to get that MF or going. So we're going to do a Rocky podcast." And especially now that it was announced that Stallone is directing Cree 2, man, that's like an episode in itself. We got to get it going. Yeah, so, right, right. right. So all kinds yeah. of fun stuff. <laughs> and, uh, we're, uh, we're excited for everybody that's excited for Justice League. We've got a bunch of watch parties all over the U.S. and. Yeah, and, come uh, to Pasadena, hang Pasadena. out. Pasadena. Brian, yours is in Raleigh, right? It's, yeah, the Raleigh Durham area. Yeah, yeah, right. And then we're doing ours down in Austin, Texas. So anyway, it, it, we just got a lot of fun, great things on the horizon that are, Ninety-five percent uh, Batman in DC, and then just some fun miscellaneous stuff. And hell, even the mis- miscellaneous stuff, most of that is DC in itself, anyway. So yeah. just keep supporting us. Write good reviews. If you don't like us, you got to write a bad review. If it's cathartic for you and it helps you get through your day, go ahead and be our, <laughs> be our guest. But we would just love your support. We appreciate it very much. I'm gonna have announcer Rachel take us out with one of my favorite tracks from Tom Petty. Let's roll. Hey now, you've been listening to the Batman on Film Podcast, a proud member and the sponsor of the Batman Podcast Network, batmanpodcastnetwork.com. You can listen to the BOF Podcast on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, TuneIn, and wherever good podcasts like this one can be found. Want to advertise on the BOF Podcast? Go to advertisecast.com slash the Batman on Film Con Podcast. Follow Jet on Twitter at Batman on Film and on BOF's Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash jet.batmanonfilm. Email Jet via jet at batman-on-film.com. Follow Rick on Twitter at Shoe Rick and on Facebook at facebook.com slash bof-shoe. 
for Jet, Rick, Justin, and Ryan, I'm announcer Rachel. Thanks for listening.